Welcome everybody to another episode of Smack the Live. We are back here in universe mode. We have a lot of things to sort out as we are two days removed from the Backlash pay-per-view. And one of the things tonight we are going to find a start finding a new challenger for Bray Wyatt's Intercontinental Championship. Alright guys, we are kicking things off here on SmackDown Live with our new SmackDown Live Women's Champion in the Hall of Famer and the legend Lita. Again, she made her shock return at Backlash, accepting Alexa Bliss's open challenge and pretty much woman handling Bliss to take the title. So we're going to see what she has to say. It feels truly great to be back here in the WWE. Most of you guys must be wondering, why is Lita back? How is she back? But I'm here to answer it. I was backstage doing several interviews for some magazines when I caught wind that Little Miss Bliss was issuing an open challenge to any woman in the back or in this arena. I figured since I was here I'd make a spur of the moment decision and accept Alexa's challenge to try and teach her a lesson. And Alexa is probably the only person not pleased to see me back in a WWE ring. But now that I am SmackDown Live Women's Champion, I am here to stay, whether she likes it or not. And by the sound of you guys tonight already, I think you guys are pleased to see me back, and I'm grateful for that. All right, Lita is back for good, everybody. New Women's Champion. Alexa, as well as some of the other women on the SmackDown Live roster, need to learn some lessons, and I guess I'll be the one to have to do that. But I do know that's just one thing that hasn't changed since I've been gone is people who lose titles get rematches. So if Alexa Bliss wants a challenge, whether tonight or next week, for the title, so be it. I'll accept it any place, any time. All right, Lita is back, guys. We're going to continue with the rest of the show. I'm still kind of shocked that Lita's back, but she is, and we'll be right back. Action, What the? what is this Finn Balor from behind with the WWE Championship clocking Cesaro in the back of the head? Along here on SmackDown Live, Emma is already in the ring. She's going to be facing off against Nikki Bella, who's wasting no time. And again, just as their match at Backlash wasn't even actually a match, it's just breaking down before the bell even rings. Nikki just going right after Emma. At least maybe we'll actually have a match this time, and it looks like we will. And Emma right off the bat with a drop kick. So elbows to the face of Nikki Bella. Drop kick from behind. And I was going to say this anyway, but. He said moments ago that their match at Backlash was just more or less a brawl to start off part two. So an actual match was slated for this evening. And at least the bell actually rang, so it is an official match. Nikki just with the pre-match ambush and missile drop kick from Emma. Now taunting as Nikki Bella struggles to get to her feet. Emma off the ropes. Avoids the clothesline. It's hit with an STO modif er, modified STO instead. Emma out before the count of one. And as I mentioned in the show introduction, we are going to start finding a new challenger for Bray Wyatt and his Intercontinental Championship. Tonight's main event will be a fatal four-way. Nikki Bell off the second rope. The winner of that fatal four-way tonight will face the winner of a triple threat or fatal four-way next episode of SmackDown Live. Emma's in trouble here trying to get out of the submission. Holding on and she does get out of it. Knee to the face. Of Nikki, another drop kick by Emma. Again, at Backlash, Bray Wyatt retained the title against Sami Zayn. Sami will have to learn, or, or not learn, 
earn another opportunity at the title if he so chooses to challenge Bray Wyatt again. But until then, we're going to find start finding new challengers, do a couple, um, I guess, small tournament style. Pretty much Nikki Bella with a snap suplex right into the cover. One, two, Emma kicks out. And both women have taken control early on in this matchup right now. Nikki Bella has the momentum. Picks up Emma. Blocks the DDT. Emma into the corner now. Slammed right down into an alley oop bomb. Nikki going right after the left leg. Picks her up. And with the big reversal there. And again, getting out of potential trouble. Nikki now into the corner. Oh, diving cross body by Emma. That's the opening that she needs. Picks her up. And right down with the cover. One, two, and Nikki kicks out. Emma was sure that she had the pinfall and the victory there. But the veteran Nikki Bella not giving up yet. And another drop kick. Emma now in the driver's seat. And now with Lita in the women's division here on SmackDown Live, everybody needs to step up their game. And both women in this matchup are doing so. It's going back and forth. Picks up Emma Rack Attack 2.0. Is she going to go for the cover? She will. One, two, three, and that is it. Nikki Bella puts Emma away, getting a measure of payback there. Some highlights there. Almost Emma almost had the victory a couple times, but Nikki Bella getting the upper hand in this one to kick things off here on Monday Night or on SmackDown Live, rather not Monday Night Raw. Nikki Bell is victorious, and we are now going to hear from the man that gravity forgot, Neville. We're back here on Smack the Live once again. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts on the episode so far, and what your favorite part of the episode is once you finish it. But right now we're going to hear from Neville. Made his return last week on SmackDown Live. And took out Randy Orton. There are reports backstage that the Viper is injured. But I guess Neville is going to address that topic as well. Let's see what he has to say. Last week on SmackDown Live, I came back with a vengeance. Starting now, I no longer am going to be overlooked on this roster. And my first victim last week, Randy Orton, who, by the way, is now out at least two to four weeks with several injuries, thanks to me. And unlike a certain lone wolf, so to speak, I was able to beat Randy Orton on my own first try. I think that says a lot. Randy is one of the best of all time. I give him credit for that. But he has never fought anyone like me. And now he knows what it's like to face me. As will everybody else at some point. I think, again, after defeating the Viper of all people, I should be considered to be a, the new challenger for Bray Wyatt's Intercontinental Championship. So I demand being in next week's Triple Threat or Fatal 4-Way, whatever The Undertaker chooses to set that matchup as. I want my shot 
and I'm not letting anybody take that away from me again. All right, Neville, furious. We now know that Randy Orton is out for at least a couple weeks, but he wants in next week's Intercontinental Championship qualifier. We're going to move to our main event, which is now the first championship qualifying match. And once, or back here, once again, SmackDown Live, now it's time for the main event. Fatal 4-Way match. First of two to determine a new opponent for Bray Wyatt and his Intercontinental Championship. First out making his SmackDown Live in-ring debut is the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. Saw him last week or the week before make a shock debut, say that he's here and then leave quick and to the point. Nakamura now in his first matchup, Fatal 4-Way action a lot on the line. To win this matchup and maybe win against whoever wins the Fatal 4-Way next week. Could face Bray Wyatt and possibly become the next Intercontinental Champion. That would be a way to make a main roster debut for sure. Next up in this match is Jinder Mahal. Last time we saw him, he was in that 3-on-1 handicap match with Aiden English and Baron Corbin trying to take on Cesaro as part of The Undertaker's challenges prior to SummerSlam. Cesaro came out on top of that, I believe. He pinned Jinder, if I remember correctly. I don't remember quite sure that is a bunch of episodes back. If you guys want to go check that out and let me know who Cesaro actually pinned in that match. Jinder Mahal getting an opportunity at a possible Intercontinental Championship match against the Eater of Worlds. So we're going to see who the other two participants in this matchup are. All right, and okay, everything's going black and white. Looks like the third participant is going to be Aiden English. Again, another person in that 3 one handicap match. Aiden English trying to get on track, not even get back on track, he's just trying to pick up wins. Here on SmackDown Live. Alright, so we're gonna see who the fourth person is. And by the crowd reaction, countdown on the screen. The fourth and final person in this fatal four way is the perfect 10, Ty Dillinger. We haven't seen much of him. I think we only saw his Smack Alive debut several weeks ago, defeating Aiden, Aiden English rather quickly, I might add. Again, another recent debut year person to debut on SmackDown Live, getting a possible chance at Bray Wyatt in the Intercontinental Championship. So, this will be qualifier number one. Winner of this faces the winner of next week's match. And the winner of that will face Bray Wyatt at the No Mercy pay-per-view. The next SmackDown Live exclusive pay-per-view here in Universe Mode. Nakamura going after Aiden English. Dillinger going after Mahal. Nakamura waiting for English to get in the ring. Knee right to the midsection. English back up. Nakamura flips out of it. Hits a knee, but misses English. I think he brushed the fall there as Dillinger was taking him down. Dillinger working the left arm of Mahal. Big right hands from Nakamura now. Snapmare by Ty. Off the ropes. And a clothesline from the King of Strong Style. Springboard from Dillinger. And English back to his feet. Takes down Shinsuke into a Boston Crab. And Mahal and Dillinger trying to break it up while going after each other as well. 
Nakamura crawling to the ropes. And he gets out of it, showing off that leg strength. Dillinger going after Nakamura now as they are the only two standing. Ooh. Drops him right on the knee. Nakamura rolling out of the ring. Now it's just Dillinger in English. Jinder finally gets back in. Nakamura up to his feet. Going right after. We're getting taken down by Aiden English. Jinder now. Only man standing there temporarily. Nakamura with the kick to the midsection. It's back in. Again, this is the in-ring debut of Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, Dillinger ramming English back first into the barricade. Dillinger back in now. Nakamura with some right hands. Another knee to Jinder. Catches at that time. Nakamura out onto the apron. Versus the right hand from the hall. And Dillinger setting up. English picks him up. Was, was going for the tiebreaker, but English gets out of it somehow. Another knee to Mahal on the outside. English with the reversal of the power bomb. It's taken down. Nakamura now the only one on his feet. English gets up though. Snap German suplex into the pin. One. Two, and Aiden English gets out of that, just barely. Jinder back into the ring. Met with a knee by Nakamura. Turns him around, tie with the cover. Inverted power slam, Nakamura. Taking out Jinder. And fatal forward action. Nakamura tossed outside in front of the announce table by English. Jinder Mahal rolling out of the ring. Nakamura in some trouble now. Nakamura and Dillinger collide a little bit trying to get back into the ring at the same time. Dillinger with English on the second rope. What's he going for? Oh, running knee. Across the apron into a senton, which English rolls out of the way of. Nakamura into the corner. Still under going for. Nakamura shoulder first into the ring post. Still under now the only one on his feet as Mahal and English try to gather themselves. Nakamura taken down again, rolling out. We're going for an atomic drop. Jinder gets out of it. English just waiting for his moment. And both men going after Ty. Nakamura going back in. Backdrop suplex from English. Into the, or off the ropes. Another need. English expected that and avoids it. Jinder into a sunset flip. Two. Dillinger gets out. the midsection once again. Then Mahal hit with the keen shot set from Nakamura. Dillinger is dazed while on his feet. One. It's broken up by the perfect ten. 
picks him up into a tiebreaker. This is Dillinger's chance in the corner, setting up for the perfect 10 maneuver. Oh, and he misses. I think he bumped into Jinder there a bit. Nakamura going right after English once again. Tie with the pin attempt. And Nakamura. Throwing Dillinger outside the ring. No, blocked by Ty. The right hand. Elbow to the face. Close line in the corner. Nakamura's chance sets him up. Kinshasa again to Aiden English into the pin. Jinder's out of the ring. Ties in the corner. One, two, three. And Shinsuke Nakamura moves on to face the winner of next week's matchup. One step closer to facing the Eater of Worlds for the Intercontinental Championship at No Mercy. One way to wrap up an episode of SmackDown Live. Any of these four men had their chance, but Nakamura executed on it at the right time. Kinshaw saw right to Aiden English to finish things off. Nakamura moves on. We're gonna end things here on this episode of SmackDown Live. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And we'll see everybody in tomorrow's video, which will be another episode of NXT.